is Mr. Harish Krishnamachar, the same person for whom you clap very loudly because he's an XLRI alumnus. Uh, other than that, he's also the senior vice president South Asia of the World Sport Group. And uh, the what's really catch about him is that aside from managing WSG's portfolio of sport rights, events, and clients on the Indian subcontinent, Mr. Harish has been particularly instrumental in managing the career of global sport icon Sachin Tendulkar. And now is important to do the same to rising star golf and compete. Mr. Harish, if you can please come on. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you wonder whether you get the ovation because of what you want to say or because it's exactly you mean here. Thank you so much. It felt, it felt really good. Uh, thank you, Professor Varshney, for giving me an excuse to come back home. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's nice to it's nice to see the person who inspired us to get into marketing sitting in the audience. Uh, Thank you so much. Really remember. Uh, for a lot of us, uh, sport was accident. We got into sport. Uh, just to draw on an old example from, from campus, uh, Father McGrath used to get us to play softball at that time. It was the first time I've ever heard of it. So uh, we used to play softball exactly probably where where this, this, this hall and this learning center is. Uh, yeah, so my getting into sport was completely accidental. I was in a corporate job, I was head of marketing, and then I was heading strategy planning with Lintas. And I got a call from an old friend and a colleague, and he said, uh, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. I said, what's it about? And he said, uh, you know, you got such a wants us to try and run his business. This was 2006, and uh, yeah, it didn't take very long to decide that uh, <laughs> it was one of those, you know, thought out rational decisions. Uh, if I tell you that I actually had multiple spreadsheets and scenarios and what ifs and a plan B, I'd be lying. We didn't have anything. We just went into it and said, let's try it and let's see where it goes. Uh, we started a company, uh, ran out of cash in 18 months. And I went back to being uh, a salaried guy in SK Lab. But uh, we still work with him, and I think that's really been the delight. Uh, I'm going to try and run you through uh, valuation. And if I or anybody else ever tells you that we knew what the value of uh, such a brand was, I'd be lying. I don't think there is a method. I don't think the industry knows a method. Uh, we've gone in there and we've felt our way around, and we've kind of learned as we go along. This is the one second plug that I will have to give to what we do. Uh, our business is professional sport. The business of sport worldwide, when we call it sport, it's professional sport. It's not amateur sport, it's not corporate sport, it's professional sport. And our entire vision over the last decade and a half in Asia has been to get Asian sport to get exposed to the rest of the world. And it's also been, in some ways, a desire to see the world come into Asia. Uh, a little ahead of our time, certainly in the, in the golfing business, certainly in the football business. But today, that's what's driving the world. The world is coming here. Marketing is bringing people here. Consumers are bringing people here. And as a result, sport is coming to it. And I think that's, that's really where we always want to go to. I'm going to try and give you uh, a little bit of uh, how we see the business. I think the business is fundamental today. It's built on knowledge and expertise like most other businesses. It's a consulting business in some ways, and then it's about sharing that expertise. Adil is one of the few people, I think, who's got that ability. Uh, thankfully, some, some people like him are in the administrative part of the business. And, and I think that's really where the knowledge and the expertise comes from. Yes, the business is built on that. There is no business without athletes. If you have uh, Harish and Gaurav, I'm just using you so that I don't feel alone, Gaurav. If you have Harish and Gaurav playing, nobody's going to watch. And if you need the athletes, at the core of every sport are the athletes, they are the stars. And very often in the business I tell people, if we forget that the athlete is at the base of it, then we're just, we're just losing, losing everything that the sport stands for. 
for us, it's been about a few businesses that we've focused on. We've big has been gone along. The core of the business today is football. Football drives the world of sport, not only not only Asian sport. It drives the world of sport. It pays my salary today. Uh, and I think that's that's really what we need to appreciate and understand. This is not EPL, this is Asian football. This is Asian club football. And the level at which it's played, it's phenomenal to believe that the media rights deals on football in Asia are past a billion dollars. And I think that's the kind of scale that we're talking about. <coughs> Golf is a business that we don't see much of in India, even, even with Mr. Munda. We don't see much of in India primarily because of infrastructure. But you see it in China, you see it in most other resorts, which build resorts around golf. And I think that's led to the development of golf in India. So that's the other big part. We're sitting in India and it would be stupid to, talk, to not talk about or not acknowledge it. So, so it is certainly a large part. Multidisciplinary sport, as we call it in the business, uh, and Olympic sport, as it's called everywhere else, I think is, is what is at the core of the business. In some ways, it's a very, very small component in Asia. And at the end of it is motor racing. You see it in, in, in F1, uh, the first F1 race is in, is in uh, Greater Noida uh, later next month. But I think that's really the way we see the structure of the business. One of the areas that is changing the world over is the area that's the managing of infrastructure, the management of infrastructure is becoming a key component of, of the business. And unless we can actually get professional management into running infrastructure and keeping them occupied and updated, we wouldn't be doing right by the industry. Production is what gets everything that is done on the track or anywhere else in stadia seen. Without production, without television, you don't actually get to see it. And eventually the business is about content. Eventually it's about content, it's about entertainment, it's about what we see on that black hole. If we can get that black hole to get filled up, then we've got money. If we get that black hole to get filled up, we've got eyeballs. If we get the black hole filled up, sponsors will follow. <coughs> we've always looked at the business and said that the business is about assets, it's about rights, about events and eventually about content. Let me just give you an example as to how we see it. We basically look at the business and say, we will be commercial partners either with an athlete or with an arena or with an association or a sporting body. And we walk in there and we say, okay, across each of the areas, across the entire sporting chain, we will find and create value. For you. In this particular model, and because it's been Asia and the way it's developed, we've actually had to embark upon a very high risk model. And that model invariably has been the underwriting of a sports property. So we've had to go in there, assess the value, assess the margin for ourselves, and then tell the sporting association, you have no downside. Your downside is covered by a bank, bank guarantee. It's high risk, it's got me a lot of pay ahead, it's got a lot of people in this business pay ahead, so that's the business. And that's the only way the association has the confidence to make you a commercial partner in the end. Because very often, if you don't get into that space, the associations think, why should I go with him? Why can't I go with somebody else? And the other trick with sport, as we realized over the years, is there's nothing in the short term. Other than a financial loss, there's very little in the short term. The game is playing long term. If you're playing anything under five years, by and large, you haven't had the ability to either deliver value to the association or to get a decent return for yourself. And I think that's, that's the key part of the business. When you do valuation, when we talk valuation in sport, valuation is driven by only one thing. There are two key parameters that we talk about in sport. One is the fact that there is nothing other than life sport. All sport is life sport. To have any commercial value at all, it has to be life sport. And I think that's that's really the space that we're talking about. The other thing that is peculiar to the industry is it's a weekend industry. So if you want to have a life, don't join sport. Because there is when everybody has a break is when you're you're working. So your work is Saturday, Sunday, I get a break on Monday. So I'm here on Tuesday. So it's nice. Yeah. Uh, but the business is about that. It's about sponsors, associations. We play the role of the of being a promoter because we undertake 
the property, we build it, we monetize it, and we share that. Just to give you some sense, when we talk football, what kind of numbers are we talking about? And when I'm talking about long term, what are we talking about? We're not talking about FIFA building a property that is close to 4 billion that delivers 200 million in return overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. None of these properties happen overnight. Each one of these associations, each one of the commercial deals that surround the business of sport are long term. And they are serious value, high value, long term propositions. The ICC, very similar. It's not very different. Every ICC deal is at least four years. It could go up to eight. But what turns around in that period of time is really what you're looking at. Look at the perspective. 200 million is football. Scale of the pie, 76 million or thereabouts is big in the ICC world. I'm not talking about the BCC and, and IPL. Golf, two of the biggest bodies that drive golf, the RNA, the Royal Ancient, and the US Golf Association. Between them, one of them runs the British Open, the other runs the US Open. Between them, they make about 24 million, 25 million in profits every year. Those are the kind of numbers we're talking about, those are the kind of sports we're talking about from perspective. Let me come down to valuation. When we, when we started this business, it was impossible to put a value to it. Okay? But we could bring, we could bring some tenets of marketing and branding into the business. And I think that's what we've tried to do. We've stuck to what we call a brand value chart for him. And we've attempted to actually build that on the basis of that. So if we walk up to a client today and we say this guy is about inspiration, what is it that he does? It's very impersonal to talk about him like that, but that's unfortunately the role I have to play. I have to play the impersonal role of looking at him as a product and a service. And ask myself, what are the values that, that a marketer can leverage? And where can it go? I think that's the basis on which we've built it. There's been a degree of consistency, and that's, that's, that's important. Sometimes I ask myself the question over the years as to what is important. Is consistency important in branding? Or do you actually want a little bit of, little bit of shake up now and then? But at least the start point, consistency is where it works. The other important thing I think we've done in this part of the business is we've moved to controlling creative. We've moved to saying that we want to see creative before it is actually produced. And I think the manner of the projection of the brand is another important part. The last point, really, from what I was expected to start off and discuss was execution and evaluation. When you look at execution, the way we look at it is you might have the best rights in the world, but it's only when the rights are executed on the ground, either in terms of hospitality or in terms of production or in terms of the actual event taking place is when content gets created. And it's only when that gets done do either the sponsors see ROI or if you have a chance of financial return, that's when you'll see it. You won't see it till then. We talked about the Indian Open other. The Indian Open is a fantastic example. Just to give you an example, there is a monkey there which is built pretty much every year, uh, depending upon the golf course, either the Delhi golf course or the DLF golf course in uh, in Burma, when we ran it. Uh, this monkey five years ago used to be important. Okay. So just look at the level of detail that we've gone through today, where we're sort of turning around and saying it's created an entire business. I have stood, I think, over the last three years very often and tried to figure out whether eight foot glass is right or ten foot glass is right and what it is. And you know, and you wonder, you ask yourself, where is execution and why? My dad often used to call me and says, is this why you study? This can't be the reason you study. You know, it must, there must be some other reason. But having said that, that's the nuts and bolts. Of the nuts and the bolts of the business in sport is in execution. And, and that's what you get, get to see. You talked about Petricom. I just want to give you a perspective on Petricom because I do believe that purely from the fact that they are partners with us and with many other sporting bodies, they are probably the only non-human 100% error free method that's, that's available to me. It's like all other forms of measurement. It is open to debate and discussion, as it is even when we have brand tracks, even when we do, you know, syndicated studies on, on research. It, it, it's about the same. But what this does fantastically 
is that it actually picks up each image, converts that into a JPEG, and then analyzes that. Using pattern recognition technology, it analyzes that to understand what value gets created. So depending upon a bunch of parameters, there's an algorithm that's built in which talks about when did it appear, which part of the screen did it appear, how often did it appear, what size did it appear in. And that algorithm then delivers a number which is used either to upscale or downscale the conventional media value, which is where the gray comes into every method. But this is where you attach a media value to that presence, and then you either upscale or downscale the value that you get. That's about eight minutes. Thank you so much. We'll talk.